Welcome back to another episode of Lucid Daily, and today we have quite a bit that we need to talk about, so let's go ahead and get started. First off, today was one of the best days in terms of news that Lucid has actually had in quite a while, and however, that was completely overshadowed by the terrible stock market action that we saw all across the board today, not to mention the even worse news that we're receiving from the macroeconomic point of view of things. And I'm going to go explain, go ahead and explain how the macroeconomic um, issues are going to affect Lucid going forward and my thoughts about it. So the first thing is this morning, I read the, actually yesterday afternoon, I read the Walmart earnings call and I, and I took notes on Target as well as Lowe's. Now here's what we need to consider. Lo, uh, Walmart and Target had three main issues. I'm going to cover two of them because I think that they mainly apply to something that could affect Lucid. One of them really does. Um, the two issues that Walmart, two of the three issues that Walmart faced was the increase in fuel and the the shutdown in China. These are really affecting Walmart as well as Target. Now, the shutdown in China, I'm not 100% sure how badly that affects Lucid. I don't know how many of their parts come out of China. I imagine a good portion of them do. So that's something that we're definitely going to be wanting to pay attention to in the Q3. But it does not sound like supply chains are getting quite better yet. It sounds like they're actually um, about the same as they were in Q1, if not a little bit worse, just because Shanghai is still shut down. So we need to have our fingers crossed that... Um, that Shanghai can open back up and that we can get the production back to where it needs to be. The next thing that really has affected Target and Walmart that does affect Lucid a little bit is the amount that it costs to ship freight. So the when they have to like put everything on the semi trucks and everything like that, the cost of fuel is so much larger. I believe it was a billion dollars more than they had estimated, than Target estimated. I could be wrong on that number. I'll have to double check. But it was an extremely large number, and I'm fairly certain it was a billion dollars. So these are some of the co- things that have really caused Walmart to fall 11% yesterday. I don't know how much they fell today. And Target fell like 23 25% today. And we do know that Lucid does ship their cars all around the country. And so I'm going to be curious. We, we do know that they are, on June 1st, they are raising the prices of their cars. So hopefully this helps offset a little bit of what we're seeing in terms of fuel. Then the other thing that was really hurting was inflation. I don't think that inflation is going to affect Lucid as badly just because it's a it's a higher class car. It's an upper class vehicle. So those are those are the three things that mainly were affecting um, Walmart and Target. And that's kind of what like consumer staples. We had a lot of faith in the consumer and it was supposed to hold up the market. However, the consumer is a lot weaker than we first anticipated at the beginning of the year. And I think that's why we're starting to see this crumble in the stock market. The stock market's been absolutely decimated. I'm going to pull up the chart right now. Um, but like I was saying, the, we, like, we were kind of counting on the consumer to hold us up. And so to see these consumer staples fall, they said like, like even like halfway through the first quarter, they're like, everything's still like looking all right. And then like the last 30 days, they got absolutely decimated. With the shutdowns in Shanghai, the uh, the cost in fuel, it's been really ugly for Walmart and all of these consumer staples. So I I don't know how much that will affect Lucid in terms of shipping. I do know they're shipping cars, but probably not the quantity that Walmart and Target are shipping products. But they are raising the prices as well. So we do know that inflation and gas prices may hurt Lucid a little bit. Um, It's kind of the irony that fuel may affect Lucid shipping an EV car. It's it's a little ironic, I just think. So Lucid was actually, they closed at $17.36 a share. They hit $18.40. And then we kind of just had this all across the market, absolute pitiful fall. Um, You had Lucid, they were down 2.75% today. They were uh, up almost a quarter percent in the after hours. If you look at Tesla, Tesla had a really rough day today as well. They were down 6.8% today, down almost a whole nother percent in the after hours. This has a lot to do with, uh, I don't know how much Elon Musk on Twitter, but Elon Musk kind of went on a rampage this morning and this afternoon on Twitter. I'm just getting super political, which he has every right to do. Just, I don't know how much that affects Tesla, or if it has the fact that they were to, that they were kicked out of the S the ESG S and P five hundred today, which is really odd, and then um, I don't think these inflation concerns really affect Tesla that much because they have pricing power and their consumers are already averaging around one hundred and forty six thousand dollars a year salary. So I don't know how I, I don't necessarily know why. I think it was probably the S and P five hundred thing that caused Tesla to fall a little bit today, but nonetheless, it, it's just par for the course. And then if you take a look at the spy today. This buy fell 4%, which is absolutely ugly. And 
it's a it's a brutal market. I actually haven't checked on Rivian in a while, but if we look at Rivian, they actually were relatively flat today. They were down three quarters of a percent, down another quarter of a percent in the after hours. So all around today, they're down about a percent. Over the last five days, they've actually been up 22 percent. Over the last month, they've been down 30 percent. I mean, over the last six months, 78 percent. So very similar story with what we're seeing along with with a lot of EV startups. Now that we've talked about all the bad news today, let's go ahead and talk about the good news. All right. So as you can see here, um, I'm sure that a lot of you have seen this. I'm going to cover my thoughts on it in a little bit more details than maybe you didn't know. Um, Lucid actually had a signing ceremony that advanced the construction of the AMP2, which is going to be another production facility in Saudi Arabia. So great news. Um, I don't think, yeah, you can see Peter Rollins is in this picture. Um, and then you have the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia officials there, and they're all doing the signing. So great news for Lucid. Next, you also have Lucid Insider. He released the notes for the incoming um, update, and you see that you have new languages, key fob updates, traffic sign recognition, and other minor updates. I am excited about the traffic sign recognition just because, like I talked about in my video yesterday, I do think that the total addressable market for autonomy are projects it's around 11 trillion dollars and if lucid can start to break into the autonomous world then that is what will really continue to propel lucid as a stock um because i don't think in tesla nor in lucid i don't think autonomy has really been valued in yet so that's something that i i'm really excited and looking forward to seeing so you can now open your uh trunk with your key fob and you can see that it has the the tra the sign readability and then they have um, hi-fi streaming and title, um, more comfortable climate control experience and minor updates. So we don't get too many details on there, but it's good to see that they're continuing to push out updates. Then next thing that I want to talk to you guys about was actually the PIF tweeted and they congratulated, congratulated Lucid on signing an agreement to open its first factory in Saudi Arabia. So I, it does not look like there's any bad blood between Lucid and Saudi Arabia. I know that most of the common sentiment now is that PIF is not selling, um, but it's just reassuring to see that. Now let's dive into a little bit more of the details regarding Lucid and their factory. So this is with a local capacity of 155 units, but they do expect to increase the global production of um, to by the mid-decade to 500,000 electric vehicles a year. And this will help continue, like this is a huge help to Saudi Arabia because it's not only pushing along their vision for 2023, um, 2030, sorry, which is expanding to a greener energy. But I had read also that there it'll provide about 30,000 jobs, which obviously does great for any sort of economy. Um, and it, it's a big incentive for Lucid to like, it's really attractive for Lucid to go to another country and be like, and like in Brazil, for example, be like, hey, like we have a, we have a system. And I would really like to see... <clears throat> Part of what makes Tesla so valuable, in my opinion, is they've mastered a fact. Like they know how to build the machine that builds the machines. And I want Lucid to get to that point where they can just build as many factories as possible. Um, that, that'll obviously have to, it'd be really curious to see how much money they raise after 2023, because we can kind of budget for how much that'll cost them. Um, so that's something to keep an eye on. And then they also had a signing ceremony celebrating the agreement estimated to provide financing and incentives to Lucid up to $3.4 billion in aggregate over the next 15 years. So if they hit certain milestones, it looks like they will get additional financing, which may go, I don't know if that'll go before 2023, uh, because that's the kind of runway they have now. I don't know if that includes 2023 or if this is something that's like post 2023. So that'll be interesting. And then they reaffirmed the commitment to purchase up to 100,000 vehicles. And then if you, over the next 10 years, if you scroll down here a little bit, you have some words um, that's spoken by Rawlinson as well as some of the other Saudi, Kingdom of Saudi Arabian officials. Um, the, other, the one thing that I really noticed, I didn't go too in depth, but you have, you had that they'll start to ship one to 2,000 vehicles annually, and then they'll increase that to four to 7,000 vehicles annually by 2025. So that's something that we'll be looking forward to. And we'll know that once Lucid's ramp is sufficient, they'll be shipping a lot more cars to Saudi Arabia, which will be exciting. Um, so yeah, that was pretty much most of the news that I had today. It, like I said, it was a pretty great day for Lucid in terms of the company. However, the stock market was absolutely destroyed today. We talked about why, my thoughts, why um, the three main things, inflation, fuel, and then 
having uh, Shanghai shut down. So I'm, I'm, that's something that I would like to ask is how much parts, how many parts come out of Shanghai? So it may be, do you guys know the answer? How many of part, Lucid's parts do actually come from Shanghai in China um, or factories that surround the area? So that, if I could ask Peter Rollinson a question, that's one of them that I would ask because that'll give us a good view for Q3. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys are doing well out there. It's a terrible stock market. I, I did buy the dip a little bit today. Um, so it, it hurts, but I think in a couple of years, we'll be really grateful that we did. So I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. And like always, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.